Welcome back motorized bike enthusiast. In today's video we're going to be taking the Motos Cranbrook build and adding on some upgraded parts. Once completed we should have a solid cockpit, nice sound profile, and a proper braking system. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description to each part we add to the bike including the parts we already have on the bike such as the fenders, the F2 thruster, and the velocity stack with air filter. Many of my longtime viewers already know that I have an issue with the stock handlebars on the Cranbrook being excessively large and putting your wrist at an awkward angle, so this is always high on my list of upgrades. We're going to take it from looking like this to looking like this. I would like to give a shout out to Joe Chipman along with anyone else who has suggested that I take a look at this new updated style of NT carburetors. It's definitely a very curious carburetor but it shares the same profile as the standard NT while having a lot of non-interchangeable parts. I'm interested to see if there's any performance or reliability difference but there's definitely a few concerns I have about its build quality. I've noticed a handful of these, so I'll definitely leave a link in the description to the one I purchased, and look forward to a future video that goes in-depth on testing this new style of carburetor. Unfortunately, it won't be on this current build, as I would like to test it on a different motor first, but I do really look forward to seeing if this has anything new to offer. Replacing the cockpit components is as simple as removing the old ones and putting on the new ones, so we'll skim through this really quick before moving on to the more complicated upgrades. I've been using the same brake set on two of my other Cranbrook builds and it's proven reliable and solid. However, I was worried about some complications with the fenders I have using the same mounting point. The front fender brake combo on the Cranbrook with this particular set is fine and really easy to install without any issues due to it having a metal mounting point. However, on the back fender it uses a plastic clip-on adapter, which is fine under normal circumstances. Now many of you know that we don't use the stock fenders on a Cranbrook because they can easily break due to metal fatigue and cause a severe accident. The plastic ones can bend and flex without breaking. These ones also allow you to add multiple mounting points with zip ties and straps, so it's a nice security issue. My main concern when installing the brakes with this fender combo on the rear side of the bike was this plastic clip. I was worried that when installing the brakes that it would crush and damage the plastic adapter for the fender. But because on the Cranbrook you have to install the brakes on the inside of the frame as opposed to the outside on most bikes. It didn't turn out to be an issue. The washer was able to spread out the force on the clip and didn't crush the plastic. When braking, most of the braking force is translated into a twisting motion on this bar, this little portion of the frame where the brakes mount, instead of a pulling motion. So it all worked out. The main reason you have to install the brakes on the inside of the frame is for clearance. The pads won't be able to reach the rim if you try and install them on the outside. And here you can see the front brake install along with the fenders. It doesn't really have any issues due to it using a metal adapter that can withstand any of the crushing forces from mounting the brakes to the bike. 
Now as I found out earlier in the year, and most of you were here to see it, I don't recommend using dual brake levers for bikes that are built for speed, or for bikes that are going to hit the trails. I still use them, but I accept their limitations. You don't have as much control over the bike when you're trying to brake with both tires under equal force. That being said, because I don't plan on this ever being a high speed build or a trail runner, I'm going to go ahead and use this extra dual brake lever that I have. It helps clean up the build and just makes things a little simpler. But I do want to let you know that this brake set does come with two nice high quality and low profile brake levers that also look really nice. Now this kit comes with the front and rear brake cables as well and the front is just the right length to fit pretty much any bike I can think of without being excessively long. However, the rear brake cable is excessively long. This is not a bad thing in my opinion. It's great to have more than you need rather than not enough. But for most bikes, you're going to have to trim it. Otherwise, you're just going to have way too much cable hanging off your bike. I have an entire video on how to make custom length brake throttle and clutch cables. I'll leave a link in the description so you can go check that out if you're going to need to do this to your bike. As a little heads up, most of the adapters where the brake cable sits on these kits come with a nut that's pretty loose. I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a free floating adapter, but I always tighten these up just for peace of mind. Now I'm using the F2 thruster on this build only because I already have the pipe and I don't want it to just sit around and go to waste. I do think its performance is pretty good compared to a stock pipe. Unfortunately, I just don't think it's the best option. In the description, I'm going to leave a link to the F2 thruster, but I'm also going to leave a link to what I think is a much better pipe for about the same price. The rear brakes already are a tight fit with these fenders and the F2 thruster is just at the right angle to be annoying and rub up against the brakes. They'll still function and they won't rub against the tire, it's just kind of annoying. I also really don't like the F2 thruster for the fact that all of this mass is hanging off of your cylinder and bouncing around. This can definitely pull out the studs and destroy your cylinder if you don't secure it to the bike. As of yet, I still don't have a solid way to secure it to the bike, but I'll have to think of something because I can't run it like this for too long. Another shout out I'd like to give is to two stroke ports for pointing out the fact that you can cut these silencers in half and still have a pretty effective one. They're not quite as quiet as the full length obviously, but they're quiet enough to not annoy every neighbor in a one mile radius, while still maintaining a nice sound profile in my opinion. Now unfortunately guys, I don't really have a good way to do this. I've only done this twice, including the one you see here, and I've also noticed that between the two silencers I bought, each one's a little different on the inner core. Basically, it just led to me using a sawzall to cut it in half, an angle grinder to remove the inner support steel bracings, and a Dremel to clean up the mess. I removed the end cap and rivets with a drill and Dremel, and then basically just riveted the new cap on to the cut in half silencer. It was a mess and uh, use gloves when you start getting into the core because you don't want this fiberglass packing material to get in your skin and you definitely don't want to accidentally rub your eye. I also highly recommend guys that you use a face mask when you start cutting into these because this stuff does go everywhere Fortunately, using the studio lights, I can see all the little particles that are floating around my head. And without these lights, I would never realize just how much stuff you would be breathing in without a mask. So if you're going to undertake into cutting one of these in half, guys, please use common sense and stay safe. After giving the bike a quick clean and once over, she's ready to take a ride.
Having sacrificed our choke so we could properly install the velocity stack, along with the cooler weather, she was a little hard to start, but once she got going, she didn't want to quit. Apologies for the slightly canted camera angle that always makes it look like my handlebars are crooked, but I assure you they're straight. Anyways, it looks like we have a bit of tuning to do, as I expected we would once adding the pipe to the motor, it definitely changed things. You really do notice, once you add a pipe, just how out of tune your motors can be. Lots of misses and four-stroking and all sorts of random things that you just can't hear with the stock setup. I also suspect that we might need to tweak the timing on this motor as well. Well, we got the rain ruining what was supposed to be a nice day. It's a good looking bike. Upgrading the cockpit really makes a world of difference on these Cranbrooks. Silencer is holding in there just fine, hasn't, hasn't fallen out yet. I didn't support the pipe with anything. So I'm hoping She'll be okay. I don't plan on taking this on anything really bumpy, but they really should have put a support built into this pipe. There's just a lot of leverage. Anyways, it looks like our fenders are doing the trick. 
I don't see a trail on the back of the seat here and I'm fixing to take off my backpack and see how bad it is. Never really gets everything, but it does get most of it. These are old, I think. Yeah, normally you'd see <laughs> just a line going straight up. It's super obvious. Those fenders are doing the trick. All in all, I really enjoy the upgrades on the Motos, but we still got a little work to do. Anyways, a little sneak peek for you guys. You asked for it, and we got it. Four stroke. But this isn't just any four stroke. Certain viewers might really enjoy this particular setup, so stay tuned for a future video. This is coming very soon on the channel. Anyways guys, until next time, ride safe.